Casey Fowler, one half of the Fowler's podcast, host of the Melanin Warriors podcast, bringing you yet another Melanin Warrior. Today we're talking about Ganga Zumba. So Ganga Zumba was an African royal who escaped slavery and created his own kingdom in Brazil in the mid-1600s. It's wild, right? Let's keep going. He was right in the center of the history and modern struggle of the Brazilian Melanin Movement or the BBM, which stands for Brazilian Black Movement. He led an alliance of other settlements in Gualambo das Palmares. In this area, it was founded by earlier Brazilian Africans in the late 16th century and was the key area of resistance to European colonizers and slavery. You know, they were free. They brought all the other people over and pretty much said, they're not going for that. You come over here, you're going to have to fight us too for them. This was one of the places in all of the Americas where melanin people who were enslaved found their freedom. The Portuguese being one of the main powers attempting to colonize Brazil at this time. Zumba became king of the Gualambo in 1670 and led the resistance against the slavers. Even though the colonizers posed a serious threat, his kingdom may continue to thrive as refugees, refugee slaves set up their own economy that was based on architecture, trade, and communal land ownership, which is really, really dope. You know what I'm saying? They, they got together, even though they were threatened by outside forces, they still brought their kingdom, their community together because they came together. <laughs> Message, Congo Zuma was rumored to be of Congo royalty after being the son of the princess of Congo. And he was probably captured after the battle of Mbwila or M-B-W-I-L-A is how it's spelled. I can't really pronounce it correctly, I apologize. Um, but they, in this battle with Portugal, they defeated the kingdom of Congo. So Zumba and many of his siblings were sold into slavery at the Santa Rita plantation in northeastern Brazil. But his royal blood and demeanor were just too strong. He wasn't going for it. So uh, after a couple of years, he rejected being a slave and escaped with his family. Afterwards, the area he escaped to, which was Palmares, began to grow as more and more slaves escaped and came here. They soon established a confederation of settlements which came to be known as Colombo das Palmares. In 1678, Zumba accepted a treaty with the Portuguese that required them to relocate. In 1678, Zumba accepted a treaty with the Portuguese that required them to relocate. The relocation was challenged by one of his nephews who eventually led a revolt against him where somehow Zumba was poisoned possibly by one of his other relatives. I mean, it's it could have happened any kind of way. You know what I'm saying? Someone snuck in, slipped something in his drink. I mean, y'all seen the movies. Anyway, after many of the followers who relocated were re-enslaved, however, the resistance continued. I'm going to say that again. Even without Zumba, the resistance continued with the African Spartacus Ganga Zumbi. Ganga Zumbi, the African Spartacus, man. <laughs> Dope. Um, so a melanin warrior he, of no blood, y'all who decided it was better to risk his life rather than to stay in bondage. And his untimely death would give rise to the Melanin Spartacus, which we will dive into next week. I'm really excited. I hope you guys are. Um, and always remember, if you don't stand for something, you can fall for anything. It's your boy.